the Lord. Go ahead and give him worship, give him praise. Lift your hands. This is the hour. He's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy of our praise. Kadosh, 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 He's the Lamb. upon the throne say he alone he alone is worthy of our praise say hey 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 He's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone, He alone, He alone. He alone is worthy of our praise. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute? If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, go ahead and pray in the Spirit. This is the hour of visitation. This is the time of liberation. This is the moment of encounter. Pray like a desperate man. There must be a touch tonight. I will not leave here the same way I came. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. In the precious name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is the moment of encounter. You have to make up your mind that you will not live here the same. You have to make up your mind that if one person will be touched tonight, you will be that person. That is the desperation that sponsors encounters. Can you lift your hands toward heaven? And say to the Father, I must receive my encounter tonight. Manda parakatoria barakata. Like Bartimaeus, somebody is crying tonight. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Tonight, I must receive a touch. Tonight, there must be an encounter. If you are the one, your prayer will be more aggressive. Can you pray in a moment? Go ahead and talk to the Father. Maro dia fakarudia takabaka zese zavano shata tata kabara feruata indo takapira shezanos Maria tata kaparota Ariana Papa kudak takatudaka zizaata mero sabaka manda kaparato this is my night of encounter mero dia feraguda paragadas mero Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If you know you will receive a touch tonight, can you shout glory? Zambia, shout glory! Shout glory! Hallelujah! We're going to the word. Could you sing that song one more time? Are you, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, give me the sound. Somebody will be touched tonight. 
cancers will go down. Deaf ears will open. Crutches will be dropped. The power of God will be made manifest here tonight. And you will be the first to receive that encounter. Shout! Jesus. He's a father in the land, an intercessor, a seasoned apostle and servant of Jesus. Can you please with a shout celebrate God's servant and his wife, Apostle Sunday Siyangwe. Come on! Glory! Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. Apostle, sir, it's truly an honor to be here. I don't take it for granted. Thank you for your labor of love. I was told that you've had these videos for over 16 years. It does not just show the sign of passion and burden for your people. It's also a testimony of consistency as a servant of Jesus. And you have demonstrated this consistently, passionately, and see what the Lord has done. Thank you so much, sir. We honor you as a father, and we honor you as an apostle from the nation of Zambia. One more time, give the Lord a shout. Yeah. I celebrate all the ministers of God that are here, and all the government officials that took out time to come. Thank you so much for coming to share fellowship. Your presence has a significant, as far as priesthood is concerned. And at the right moment in this meeting, we are going to take advantage of the different mantles that are here to speak a word over the nation of Zambia. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you richly. Zambia, Mulibuanji. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now touch the keyboard for me. Give me floating sound so I can share the word of God briefly. Just play something for me. I want to share with us very briefly tonight. It's not a discipleship night. It's a night of freedom. So it's a night of power. Tonight we have come here not for discipleship. We have come here to stir the faith of people so that the power of God can go to work and then we can also wield the scepter of priesthood and create change in the nation of Zambia. So if you have a seat, you can sit. If you, are, if you don't have a seat, you can stand. I won't be talking for too long. Thank you very much. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus was speaking and he opened us up to realities that were taking place in the spirit realm. Thank you so much, choir. God bless you. Thank you so much. Jesus began to educate us from a syllabus that is not obtainable in the university. When you go to the university, you can study physics, you can study chemistry, you can study philosophy. But there was a syllabus that Jesus began to draw our attention to. And he was showing us the realities that were taking place in the spirit realm. Because when you come into the community of men, just the way we are gathered tonight, you will assume that men are intelligent. You will assume that men are educated. You will assume that men are organized and smart. And it's on the strength of their smartness and intelligence that civilizations are built. But Jesus came to differ. And he began to tell us that the things we see happening among men are actually designed and orchestrated from the spirit realm. And so in John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, The thief does not come except but to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, but I am come that you may have life and life to the full. So Jesus was telling us that everything that happens to men and among men is a function of spirit interference. Spirits shape human civilization. No matter the structures that we create, at best, we are puppets in the hands of spirits. We may create an organized government. We may create an organized system. But Jesus is telling us that ultimately, the manifestation that you see among men is a product of spirit entities. And he said from this scripture, the first that comes does not come with any good intention. The manifesto of the devil is threefold. He said he cometh to steal, to kill, 
and to destroy. So every time you see among men that someone loses something or someone dies or something is destroyed, Jesus is telling you that is not an event. That is the outworking of a spirit personality called the thief. Death is not an event. It's an orchestration of a spirit. Destruction is not an event. Human entities can be used as puppets to facilitate it. But he said the power behind every destruction is a function of the invasion of the thief that cometh to steal, to, to kill, and to destroy. There are men who were born fit and sound. Suddenly, at certain age of their lives, something grows out. They call it cancer. And then the doctor tells you it's chemical imbalance. Your system was not designed to suddenly erupt into chemical imbalance. Somebody is born and then all of a sudden, destruction befalls that person. And in our humanity, we want to look for a way to explain it. Jesus came to tell us that spirits are responsible for the outcome of human life. And he also gave us an option that there are two dimensions to the spirit realm. There are the spirits of darkness that are responsible for destruction. And there is also the spirit of God that is responsible for life and life to the full. And so when you find a man and you study his experiences and it's not consistent to life, it's not consistent to vitality, it's not consistent to abundance, it means that man is suffering from the captivity engineered by the devil. And so because the devil cometh, there is death. Because the devil cometh, there is destruction. And I can tell you that this destruction is in no small scale. The Bible speaking in Isaiah 60 from verse 1 to 2. Hear what it says. It says, arise, shine. It says, your light is come. The glory of the Lord is lifted upon you. It says, but in case you do not arise. Hear what it says. It said, darkness shall cover the earth. So the oppression of this thief is not just in one family. The oppression of this thief is not just in one nation. He said, darkness shall cover the whole earth. And he said, gross darkness shall cover the people. Darkness is not just this canopy you are seeing. No. This is different. When he talks about darkness, he's talking about death. He's talking about destruction. Everything that negates living a profitable life. The Bible calls it darkness. So when a man is sick, he's in darkness. When a man is in poverty, he is in darkness. When a man is frustrated in life, he is in darkness. And Jesus said, this is not an occurrence. He said, the spirit is sponsoring it. And so when a generation understands this truth, they will rise up. This is why we have gathered tonight. We have gathered tonight because we want to say no to darkness. We have seen that sickness is not an event. We have seen that death is not an event. We have seen that destruction is not an event. So we must arise. Because if we don't arise, we cannot shine. Your shining is at the mercy of your arising. If you arise, you will shine. If you sit down, you will be in darkness. And when darkness comes, darkness will steal from you. Darkness will kill you. And darkness will destroy you. This is the plague of the earth realm. And do you know the way the devil works it? The devil is an organized being. Make no mistakes about it. Please don't assume that the devil is disoriented. No. He has an organized structure. There is an attack on the body of men. There is an attack on the source of men. There is an attack on the systems that men create before there is an attack on the whole earth. When you study your Bible, the Bible speaks of some spirits and it calls them unclean spirits. In Luke 12, 43, it said when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he moves about in dry places, in desolate places. That means there are some spirits that are allocated to possess men. So the way the devil works is that he possesses people first. When he possesses them, 
then he manipulates them from inside. He either attacks their bodies or he corrupts their mind. So when you find somebody who is mad, the doctor may tell you is schizophrenia. But in the spirit, he is possessed by an unclean spirit. That's why he wakes up suddenly. He wants to go and live in the trash can. He enjoys dirty environment and he is beside himself. That is not just his brain twisting. That's a demon whispering to him. The man you call mad is actually not mad. He is responding to a frequency from another realm. You are the one who thinks he's mad. He is hearing something. He is seeing something that you are not seeing. He is under the influence of an unclean spirit. Have you not seen madmen before? In the night when everybody is sleeping, they are running and they are singing. As far as they are concerned, they are in a big party enjoying themselves. When they look at you, you are the one who is mad to them. Because as far as they are concerned, you are not aware. Look at the enjoyment. Look at the celebration everywhere. And they are just gyrating. And you are, oh, this person is mad. He is not mad. He is responding to another frequency. He is hearing another realm. That is what he is, or is possessed by. And so Jesus is saying, that is a function of a spirit. The devil is organized. There are spirits called spirits of infirmities. You are the one who thinks, oh, sickness just happens. It does not just happen. A spirit is involved. In Acts 10, 38, everybody Jesus healed, the Bible said, they were oppressed of the devil. Every sickness has a spirit behind it. If you know this, when next you are sick, you will go to war. Because you will know that this thing did not happen because I caught cold. I caught cold. This thing did not just happen because a mosquito beat me. A spirit is involved. This is why some people die of headache. The doctor can tell you headache is a function of stress. Wait until a spirit gets behind it. Headache can become tumor in the brain. Headache can lead to coma and headache can lead to death. Because spirits hide behind sickness. A generation must rise that will tell the devil, we know you. No matter how you come, we know. We know you are involved. And we are not taking anything easy with you. You devil, you devil, you devil. Get out of my body. Get out of my house. And you will notice that the devil will pack and go. But the question tonight is, have you understood that spirits are involved? Somebody labors on his business for five years, for ten years. Suddenly, they say there is fire outbreak in the market. One foolish person wakes up out of jealousy, sets the market on fire. You didn't know that the spirit whispered to his ear. And then he burns down a business of 10 years. 10 years of labor. Because a spirit is involved. The problem with men is that number one, they are not intelligent enough to see the spirits behind the action. Men still think things that happen are coincidences. And that's why coincidences leads to death. Coincidences leads to poverty. Coincidences leads to destruction. I came to tell you tonight that there are captains over this civilization. Some of them are deployed to possess men. But spirits don't stop there. There are other spirits that possess systems. There are other spirits that possess nature. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible said, The sons of disobedience are under the power of the spirit of the air. So there is a spirit that possesses atmospheres. Why do you think when you come to church, suddenly the place becomes charged, people start getting baptized in the Holy Ghost? Because spirits have the capacity to possess atmospheres. And there are certain beings in the demonic realm who don't possess men, they possess atmospheres. And when they manipulate an atmosphere, they can corrupt a territory. Whether you are a beggar, whether you are a government official, whether you are a businessman, it does not just matter. So long as you enter that atmosphere, you start thinking corruption. The moment you enter that atmosphere, you start thinking evil. Because spirits are masters. They are called colonial masters. They shape civilization. And men are at the mercy of spirits. He said, the devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The question tonight is, if the devil has such an organized structure, what then is the hope of humanity? Because men are possessed, systems are possessed, territories are possessed, nations are possessed. What is the hope of humanity? 
Did you read about Samaria? The Bible spoke about a sorcerer that a spirit empowered that bewitched the whole city. And so people think they are smart. Somebody goes to an altar, partners with a spirit, releases a spell into the atmosphere, and the governor is misbehaving. He doesn't know. The businessman is misbehaving. He doesn't know. Even the pastor is misbehaving. He doesn't know that a spirit has hijacked the air. And you think it's coincidence that a young man who is in the university, who should be studying, suddenly wakes up, carries gun, and kills his mates. And then you think it's normal. You think it's normal that a man suddenly wakes up and says, I don't love women anymore. I love men. You don't know that emotions are being manipulated. You think it's normal that a terrorist group just gathers and all they are thinking is how to detonate another nation and kill people. When people die and they create panic, that's when they are satisfied. You think it's normal? Spirits are involved. So why we have penitentiaries? Why we have prisons? Why we have court systems to tame men? We must go into the spirit realm to deal with the spirits. Because prisons can't stop it. Penitentiaries can't stop it. The court system can't stop it. They can only tame those who are already victims. But the true answer is in the spirit realm. Tell somebody, we will enter the spirit realm tonight. The thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And in order to be effective, he has a structure. He possesses wives. He possesses husbands. He possesses children. He possesses leaders so that he can manipulate them. So that he can weaken their system. He possesses organizations. He possesses territory. And then you are now asking, if this is the case, what then is the hope of humanity? The Bible said we are not without a witness. We are not without a witness. God knew what the devil would do. You know, because God wanted to demonstrate his power, he allowed the devil to go first. Go first. Do what you can do. I am coming. When you study the scripture, many times you will notice it's the devil that comes first. The Bible said in the beginning, after God created the heavens and the earth, suddenly, he said the earth was in chaos. The devil showed up and destroyed the earth. After he destroyed the earth and he thought it was over, suddenly the monarch appeared. I have the power. It's easier to destroy than to repair. You don't need to study architecture. You don't need to study civil engineering to pull a building down. You can pull a building down in one day. Try to build. You will notice that it has, it's more power to build than to destroy. And so when the devil destroyed, God showed up. The Bible said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, light appear. And the light appear. He said, let the dry ground appear. The dry ground appear. He said, let the animals appear. Everything appear. Let the trees appear. Everything appear. Because it doesn't matter what the devil did. And I came to announce to you today, it doesn't matter what the devil has done. Jesus has come. He said, the devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He said, but I am come. The answer to human crisis is a man. The answer to human affliction is a man. The answer to human quagmire is a man. The name of that man is Jesus, the Son of God. That's the full package that God gave to humanity. Imagine, imagine for a second, which university in the world can produce a course that will solve man's problem? Imagine for a second, which government can solve man's problem. Most governments of the world are confused. When you go to strategy meetings, they are asking, what do we do? What do we do? Because as they do one, it spirals into another. But there is a cure. There is an answer to human affliction. And the only one who can solve man's problem is the one that created man. The only one who can solve the problem of the earth is the one that created the earth. The only one who can solve the crisis of system is the one that created the wisdom to build them in the first place. And that one is God of heaven. But here is the problem. When Israel had crisis and God appeared, they couldn't go near him. You know why? If God shows up here, you will see thunder and lightning. All of us will run. The power is too much. Even the angels that serve him the Bible said they can't approach him. The seraphims and the cherubims, they cover their faces, they cover their feet, and they lie on their faces, and they cry, holy, 
Holy is the Lord. You know the meaning of holy? Holy is not a name. Holy means you are in your own class. You are separated to your name. Nobody can approach you. Nobody can come near you. So stay where you are. We worship you from here. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. But God wanted to help man. God wanted to enter inside man. So what God did was to create a wisdom. The wisdom by which he will not only approach us as a group, but he can approach us as individual. The wisdom by which he will not only approach us, but he will live on our inside. And so the technology God invented was for God to become a man. So what God did was he stepped out of his throne put his glory aside and he wore the garment of man and he entered the womb of a woman after nine months god was born as a man and god walked on the earth like a man and when they looked at him they couldn't imagine angels were asking is that our god men were asking is that the son of god he looks like the carpenter and god didn't say anything suddenly when jesus was 30 years old the bible said john was baptizing at the jordan and jesus showed up and by the prophetic anointing john looked at him and said behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sins of the world and god was reintroduced to man because the bible said he came unto his own his own received him not he said but as many as received him to them he gave the power to become the sons of god so god had to be introduced to man now hear this hear this when jesus came if jesus introduced himself and say I am God everybody will laugh at him so you know the way he introduced himself he came to the person that was blind and they said I open and eyes open he came to the person that was deaf he said ear open and ear open at another point a man died and he was buried for four days and Jesus showed up and said where did you keep him they said no 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 in this realm if a man dies it's over he said no not with me I'm trying to introduce myself. If I say I am God, you won't believe. So show me where the dead is. And they say, no, oh, he is, he's rotting now. His body is smelling. He said, no, I am the resurrection and the life. Now I can introduce myself. I have power over death. And the matter said, Lord, we know on the last day, men will rise from the dead. I'm not talking about the last day. I am the first and the last. The last day is in me. Where did you keep him? Martha was arguing. He now told somebody else, take me to where they buried him. When he showed up, he looked at Lazarus. And the Bible said, what has never been seen before was seen. Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come forth. And he said, he that was dead. Only Jesus can change the status of a dead man from east to west. So you can be dead. When Jesus shows up, they will reintroduce you. He said, he that was dead came back to life. And he said, lose him, let him go. From that day, he began to introduce himself. We are not hopeless. We are not hopeless. When God saw that spirits are taking over men, that spirits wanted to destroy the realm of men. He had to show up. He had to show up. So anyone who will live in victory must know Jesus. He must know him as Savior. And he must also know him as Lord. And I will show you why these two revelations are important. Remember in Isaiah 7 14. The Bible said the Lord himself shall show you a sign. It said the virgin shall give birth. And you shall call his name Emmanuel. Because God is with us. Remember, I told you, God could not be with us because he was too powerful. His realm was too glorious. So God now came in the likeness of a man so that God can be with us. But in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, they added another layer. He said, the angel told Joseph, his name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins. As it was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, a virgin shall give birth. You shall call his name Emmanuel because God is with us. So anybody who wants to come out from stealing, who wants to come out from death, who wants to come out from destruction must know Jesus the Savior. There was nothing we would have done. Why do you think the devil was powerful? The devil is a legalistic being. He didn't just seize power by coup d'etat. No. No. The devil took power by illegal means. The law of the spirit is that the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. 
So when man sinned, man surrendered his power. Man gave up power willingly. God created man to be the God of this world. But when man decided to obey the devil, he surrendered power. So because of that, man became a slave by his own will. And because man became a slave by his own will, God had to pay a huge price to save the man. And so when Jesus came as Savior, he didn't just demonstrate power over sickness. No. He didn't just demonstrate power over nature. No. He didn't just demonstrate power over demons. If Jesus did that, you and I would have said, Jesus has power. But the moment he went to heaven, we would have said he has gone with the power. So Jesus did not just come to show power. First of all, he demonstrated power so that you will know that he's not bluffing. Because if he says he's your savior, you will tell him, how about the blind man? How about the deaf man? How about the lame man? How about the dead man? So he first of all needed to show you that he has power over human affliction. And every affliction of man, he handled it. And Jesus did not just deal with the affairs of man. Jesus also handled power over nature. There was a time, the Bible said the disciples were on a boat. And he said, Jesus came walking on water. Because he needed to show them that he had authority over nature. Because the devil did not only enslave man. The devil also enslaved nature. So Jesus demonstrated power over the fallen man. He also demonstrated power over nature. But that would not have saved you. Because the moment he went to heaven, he would have gone with the power. So he needed to do something to change your status as a slave. And for that to happen, he had to pay the price for your sins. So the reason Jesus died was not because death could conquer him. He laid down his life. He said, this commandment have I received from my father. I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up again. When he laid down his life, he paid the price for your sin. I'm showing you where salvation comes to you now. Because if Jesus said, be saved, it would not have worked. Because himself said the law that the wages of sin is death. But Jesus had to activate the law of substitution by dying for you. So the Bible said he died, he was buried, he was rose again from the dead on the third day. On the strength of that, he paid the price for your sin. But that's not where the glory is. The glory is much more than that. Because if Jesus paid the price for your sins, you would have been saved but you would have been powerless. So Jesus the Savior brings you salvation. But if all that we had was salvation, we won't have the authority to represent Jesus on earth. God didn't just come to save us. God wanted us to represent him. So after Jesus resurrected, he now came to us and said, All hail the King. He said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He said, but I'm about to go to heaven. I don't need the power in heaven. You are the one on earth. You are the one that needs the power. So he said, you go in that power. You go in that authority. So that when they need Jesus, he doesn't need to come down from heaven anymore. When they say we need Jesus, you will show up and say, Christ in me, the hope of glory. When they say they need Jesus, you say, Jesus is here. Because when I show up, Jesus shows up. When I show up, power shows up. When I show up, authority shows up. Because now, I am the representation of Jesus to my generation. Listen to me. We no longer pride ourselves after earthly possession. That's why, for the man who understands this truth, his glory is not in his watch. His glory is not in his suit. His glory is not in his shoe. His glory is Christ in him. His glory is Christ in me. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ in me is the hope of glory. So when your generation is looking for glory, you tell them, I am here. Jesus is in me. I manifest his power. I manifest his glory. I manifest his splendor. And do you know what? My brothers and sisters, God knows this. The angels know this. The devil knows this. Only you don't know. Every demon in hell knows. 
Because before Jesus gave you the power, he actually collected it from the devil. If you read your Bible, please follow me. If you read your Bible, in Matthew chapter 4, when the devil was tempting Jesus, he told him, bow down to me. I will give you all the powers and the glory of the earth. For it has been delivered to me. Jesus didn't argue. Because if Jesus argued, it would have meant he didn't understand. But he knew that the power was his, with Adam. Adam handed it. So Jesus kept quiet. I know where to collect that power. I will not collect that power here. I will collect that power in hell. Where every demon will be aware that the battle is over. If I do it in this desert, nobody will know. So the Bible said, when Jesus descended into hell, he said, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So when Jesus took the power, they did a public celebration so that heaven we know, earth we know, and the world beneath we know. So every being knows that all power belongs to Jesus. But the glory is this. When Jesus wanted to go to heaven, he didn't take all power to heaven. He handed over all power to you and I. And so when we show up, when the devil looks at us, he remembered the battle that was in hell. You know what now happens? When the demon of cancer comes, we remind him, are you not aware when the battle took place, you were defeated? This is why we command demons. This is why we command sicknesses to be healed. Because there is no battle anymore. The battle has been fought. We are called more than conquerors. So when we meet a demon, we are enforcing our victory. We are not fighting to win. We are fighting from victory. We are telling the devil, we are aware that you are defeated. We are aware that you are powerless. We are aware that we have the victory. And when you do that, every devil bows. Every demon bows. Every devil bows. Oh my God. When this realization came to me, I told myself I would be a wonder to my generation. So when you find a Christian talk with authority, he's not boasting in himself. He's boasting in the finished works of Christ. Because Jesus went to hell. He defeated every demon there. You know what the devil did? When Jesus descended, they quickly invited every demon. International demons were invited. Local demons were invited. Every type of demon was invited. They said, let us trap him here so that he will not live here again. That way we will rule forever. But Jesus was watching them because prophecy captured it that he won't rise on the first day. If he rose on the first day, they would have said he fainted, he didn't die. They said he won't rise on the second day. It's on the third day that he will rise. And when the third day came, all the demons on earth, all the principalities, all the powers gathered. And the Bible said, he rose up by the glory of the Father and he stripped the devil of power. And when he came to meet the disciples, he said, All hail the king. All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus is the possessor of all powers. But today, he has handed that power to the church. What is the key of this message? The key of this message is that what you manifest is a function of your faith. Your faith is now the key. Your faith is now the answer. The moment you believe it, it becomes your reality. Because now when you believe it, Christ enters your heart and Christ manifests through you. So you no longer need to meet God in the cloud. You no longer necessarily need to meet God on a mountain. If you want to go to the mountain to pray, to be concentrated and focused, that is good. But now, God is on your inside. God is on your inside. So when you are moving, God is moving. When you are walking, God is walking. When you are singing, God is singing. When you are dancing, God is dancing. Do you now see that everything we do manifests power? This is why when we worship, power moves. When we dance, power moves. When we preach, power moves. When we command, power moves. Because anything we are doing, that's what God is doing. Have you seen a pregnant woman before? If a pregnant woman is running with a son be standing, with a baby in the womb be standing, no, he can't stand. If a pregnant woman is sitting, the baby is sitting. If a pregnant woman is standing, the baby is standing. If a pregnant woman is eating, the baby is eating. If a pregnant woman is running, the baby is running. This is what we are now. We are now pregnant with God. God is on our inside. God dwells on our inside. Anything I'm doing, that's what God is doing. When I'm celebrating, God is celebrating. 
When I'm running, God is running. When I'm talking, God is talking. Because now God dwells here. You ask God, where is God's embassy? This is the embassy of God. Where is God's dwelling place? This is the dwelling place of God. Where is the house of God? This is the house of God. Because of that, you have become a carrier of glory. Somebody shout! Now, 120 men knew this thing and they took the award. See how many of us are here. Imagine if all of us accept this truth. Zambia is too small. We will now start exporting evangelists. We will start exporting apostles. We will start exporting prophets. Because the city will become too small. If 120 took the award, we have over 6,000 people here. Come on, brothers and sisters. We don't need 300 people for Zambia. Zambia is too small for 120 men who carry God. If we are 6,000 here, then Africa is about to be delivered. So the Freedom Night is not only for Zambia, the Freedom Night is for Africa. Because as you live here, you will live with the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah, hey. Hey, hey, ha. this meeting I told my friend Patrick I said Patrick the devil is in trouble tonight I told him when Gibson came to my room you know when I didn't know these things when I'm invited to preach I'm going and praying oh Lord please show your power oh Lord please do miracles when I knew it I knew that God is the one telling me go out and do miracles he said you go heal the sick you go raise the dead you go cleanse the lepers. When I knew this, when, I, when, when Gibson came to pick me up, I told Gibson, hope there are people with crutches there. I told him, hope there are people bedridden there. Because I'm interested in those who are sick. I'm interested in those who need a miracle. Because I am not a lecturer. No, I am a witness of the power of God. I am not a lecturer. I'm a carrier of the glory of God. I am not a lecturer. I'm a testament to the faithfulness of God. And tonight, God will demonstrate His power. <laughs> Lord. Yeah. God did. Sir, God is not only interested in healing us. God wants every one of us to become a healer. That's what God wants. It's testimony at one level for people to be healed. But the major testimony is that every one of us become carriers of the healing power. That's why, hear this, Jesus gave all of us a key. If you are going to the hotel where I'm staying now, all I need to give to you is a key. It doesn't matter if you are male. It doesn't matter if you are female. If you have that key, you will open that door. So when Jesus was going, he didn't just leave it to our faith alone. He gave us a key. And the key he gave us is his name. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name they shall heal the sick. In my name, if they drink anything, it shall not hurt them. 
in my name they shall walk on serpents and scorpions and they shall not be hurt why is that so you know why the bible said when he finished the assignment of the father he said god gave him a name that is above every name he said that at the name of jesus every knee should bow every tongue should confess that jesus is the lord to the glory of god the father he said that name of authority over every being in heaven over every being on earth and over every being in the world beneath and he said every name that is named is under that name i don't know what they call the name of your problem it can be called cancer it can be called blindness it can be called deafness it can be called arthritis but there is a name above every other name he said at the name of jesus every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that jesus is the lord to the glory of god the father someone shout jesus shout jesus Brothers and sisters, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, tonight is my night of freedom. Because I have the key to the supernatural. I believe in Jesus. I'm going to use his name tonight. He said the signs are for those that believe and will use his name. I believe and I will use his name so I will see the supernatural now. Are you seeing how simple God has made the supernatural life? I'm not telling you stories. Last week I was in Cameroon. They dropped crutches. Cancers left. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. It has been so. I've been to Arab nations. I've been to English nations. I've been to African nations. I know what I'm telling you. It does not fail. At the name of Jesus every knee bows at the name of jesus every tongue confesses that jesus is the lord to the glory of god the father shout the fire of god will fall here in a moment but hear me if we don't demonstrate this, it will look like this Christian fanatist have come again. You know, God is more interested to do miracles than you are ever interested to see it. That is his realm. It's a miracle walking realm. That's his nature. And God hates to see people oppressed. When Jesus was walking the earth, he healed in the morning, he healed in the afternoon, he healed at night. He healed on the land, he healed on the water. He did miracles everywhere, on ground, on water. Even when he was tired, he woke up and did miracles. Because Jesus hates oppression. And anybody who came here with oppression tonight, this is your hour. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I want you to do something. I want you to tell the devil, sorry you allowed me to come here. My afflictions are over. My crisis are over. My frustration is over. I am free forever. I am free forever. I am free forever. Bye bye to cancer. Bye bye to blindness. Bye bye to deafness. I step into the glory. I step into my freedom. 
I step into my liberty. If you believe that, shout! I want us to do something in a moment. I want you to dance your victory dance. In another two minutes. You know why? We are not hoping that God will do something. We know God will do something. Because he has already done something. Can you dance your victory dance? As a testimony of your faith. Before we use the name of Jesus. Who is the praise leader? I need some praise. Hot praise. Just two minutes. Listen, listen. This is your demonstration of your faith. As you do this, then we will use the name of Jesus. And then we will take some testimonies. And afterwards, we will release the fire of God. Are you ready? Zambia, shout! When I don't know what to do I look up to you For which way to go You never fail me When I don't know what to do I look up to you For which way to go This is your hour. The devil is helpless on this matter. Shout hallelujah to the boss. 
Shout! Shout! You know why we are dancing? We are telling the devil, now we know you are powerless. Now we know we have been healed. Now we know we have been delivered. And now we collect it by force. The word is to Catalambano. We are not waiting to receive it. We are taking it from your hands. We are collecting it by force. So in the next one minute, brutally, take your miracle now. Take your miracle by prayer. Collect it by prayer. I have tolerated you enough. No more, no more, no more. Now, now, I take it by force. No more tolerance. Weeping may endure for the night. Joy comes in the morning. Our light afflictions are but for a moment. They work for us an eternal weight of glory. I refuse sickness. I refuse death. I take my miracle. I collect my miracle. I snatch my miracle. Marakabatoa. Zeraka Paradwa. Zetetetetetakaya. Zetetetetetakaya. Paradwa. Zetaf. Fari Katwa Katakato. Shabata Paradwata. Ese Zosana. Paracodo. I take it by force. Cancer die. Blindness go. Bracodo Sakatoria. Sharabwata. Zeragatatatua. I take it by force. I take it by force. Christ paid for it. I demand it now. I demand it now. I demand it now. I demand it now. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and collect it. Pararodo Shabakada. Take it by force. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know what the Bible said? It said now. Faith is now. Not tomorrow. Now. Now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now. How many of you want your miracle tomorrow? How many of you want your miracle next week? If you want your miracle now, jump up and shout! I'm talking to the right people. 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 Lift your hands toward heaven. Lift your hands toward heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, your amen can be louder if you want to be the first to catch it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over every demon of infirmity. I take authority over every devil of sickness. I take authority over every spirit of death. In the name of Jesus, come out of their bodies. We command your hold to break now. We command your chains to break now. In the name of Jesus, I command blind eyes, open. I command deaf ears, open. I command pains on the body, arthritis pains, come out of their bodies now. Come out now. Come out now. In the name of Jesus, I command every tumor, be it pile, cancer, or growth in the breast, in the name of Jesus, dematerialize now. Dematerialize now. Every spirit of lameness, and every spirit affecting your mobility, I command them to go now. Broken bones be healed. Lame legs begin to walk. Receive strength now. Begin to walk in the name of Jesus. I command blood sicknesses 
go now. I command organ infections from kidney to liver to lungs be healed in the name of Jesus. I command every stomach disorder and situations related to the menstrual cycle. I command be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. I break chains of poverty. Come out of the bondage of poverty. Come out of the bondage of poverty. In the name of Jesus. Ears that could not hear, hear now. Eyes that could not see, see now. Every asthmatic condition. Cases of the lungs and breathing. I cause you to your root. Be healed in the name of Jesus. All forms of pain. Leave them now. Leave them now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands toward heaven and give him glory. Give him glory. Thank him for your healing. Thank him for your healing. Thank him for your healing. Now begin to exercise your faith. If there's anything you could not do before, begin to do it now. This is freedom night. This is the hour. Anything you could not do, begin to do now. If you couldn't hear, begin to hear. If you couldn't see, begin to see. If you came here with a crutch or with a walking aid, can I see it? Lift it up. You came here with a walking stick, a crutch, a walking aid. Anybody with a walking stick, lift it up now. Lift that stick up and begin to walk wherever you are. That affliction goes now. It goes now. If you came here bedridden, stand up now and begin to walk. Stand up and begin to walk. Stand up and begin to walk. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. Exercise your faith now and see that the Lord has touched you. See that the Lord has touched you. See that the Lord has touched you. Begin to walk. Begin to hear. Begin to see. Do what you couldn't do before. If you are around somebody who is struggling to walk, lift them up. Lift them up. Let them walk. Thank you, Father. Yes, somebody is lifting a walking aid there. Walk now. You have been healed. Walk. Walk, you have been healed. All over this place, you came with a walking stick. Lift it. Start walking. Start walking. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Afflictions are going now. Afflictions are going now. Check your body. You discover you had a growth. That growth has vanished. Check your body. I don't know if you know how to dance here. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance.
check your bodies. If you have noticed the healing, can you wave at me? I'm seeing hands. If you have noticed the healing already, eyes can see, ears can hear, a growth has left your body. You have already noticed the healing. Check your body. Check your body. Can I see those hands? Can I see those hands? Can I see those hands? Can somebody clap and give Jesus a big hand? Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Somebody shout. Now hear me. We are going to take a few testimonies. We still have a lot of praying to do tonight. This is the lowest things we are handling. Sicknesses. When we need to address territories and nations, that one is priesthood. We will enter brutal intercession in a moment from now. We came here to pray. People will not only be healed. Zambia, a new Zambia must be born. Ah, a new Zambia. We will enter brutal intercession here and pray for the land. The easiest thing to handle is sickness. But when we finish with sickness, we address government. We address the economy. We address the land. That one is prayer. Brutal intercession. And we will pray that prayer here tonight. Are you ready for the new Zambia? Yeah. Shout! Now hear this. If you have noticed the healing already, can I see that hand one more time? Can I see that hand? From wherever you are, run to the left here. From wherever you are standing, those of you who have noticed the healing, run to this place quickly. We'll take a few testimonies, very few testimonies, before we enter the session of prayer. Run to this place here, quickly. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Give me one song as they are coming. Keep coming, they are coming, they are coming. Celebrate Jesus with a big hand. Celebrate Jesus with a big hand. Is this how you celebrate wonders in Zambia? Somebody celebrate Jesus. Completely. completely completely so you were completely blind on the left ear yes. can you see now yes. turn to me sister don't cry don't cry how many fingers are you seeing here do what you are seeing do what you are seeing do what you see allow her just let her be let her be look at me look at me sister do what don't talk just do what you are seeing look and do what you are seeing Look at this. Yes, do what you are seeing. 
Look, keep looking. She's just overwhelmed. She's crying. Look at me. No, don't look down. Look at my hands. Do what you see. You can see here clearly. That's why we are testing so that we perfect it. Now, when it happens partially, you correct it. <laughs> I command the shadow to go now in the name of Jesus. See completely by the power of the Holy Ghost. Carry her up now. Manta Prakasusa Ephradakas. Carry her up, brothers. Carry her up. Perfection in the name of Jesus. Look at me, sister. What are you seeing? What color of handkerchief? It's white. It's white. What? Can you see it clearly? Now, follow me. Follow me, sister. Follow me. Follow me. Somebody shout! It's permanent in the name of Jesus. Talk to me, what happened? Mama here had a stroke. She had a stroke. And for one whole year, she has not been able to walk. For one year, she's one not been able to year, walk yes. like this. Like this for one she's whole year. not been able to walk like this. This is her niece. Bring oh. mama up. Let's see. I know that leg needs to be exercised. But she couldn't walk on her own like this. For one year. And you are just looking like that. Give Jesus the shock. My God. Why mama is coming up? Give me another testimony. Talk to me. I need two or three persons to take this so that we can so be fast. Yes, his brother me. had an attack. You had an attack? Yes. yes, Apostle. I had an attack last year. That's somewhere around March. And when I went uh, uh, out with my friends, I just had a terrible headache. And this, my left eye was affected. So, but what happened to the left eye? This side is light. And I, when I close like this, I can see you properly. Wait, could you not see with the left eye before? When it is this time, I can't see anything. You couldn't see because of the attack at night. Yes. So when you were you were dancing here, you were not seen with your left eye. Yes, yes. yes. You were not seen. Yes. I'm but you can see now. I can see. Properly. Come up here, brother. Give the Lord the shout. You could not see with your left eye. So all the while that you were here at night, you couldn't see. Nobody. You couldn't see properly. It is so light. The side was even heavy. What happened now? This time I'm I'm light and I'm able to see. Even if I close, I can see I can see those uh, cameras which are mounted. And you are just looking like that. Somebody shout! Hello, sir. There's a testimony here, sir. Can you see this? Close that eye. Yes. Can you see this? I can see it. Come and take it. Power of God in the name of Jesus. Also, there's a testimony Wait here. a minute. Mama had stroke. So she couldn't stand like this Over on her own. Year. Over, Over one year. Over a year, yes. She couldn't stand like this. Yes. She couldn't even walk it's at the first all. Time. This is the first time. Yes, that in one year. Yes, that Mama walk, let's see. For over one year. Glory! For over one year. For over one year. Mama, Mama is saying something here. Yeah. One year, three months. One year, three months. Yes. You couldn't walk on your own like this. See what Jesus has done. What did she say? Over one year. Father, this is perfected. It's perfected. Strength to strength. In the name of Jesus, I release life is perfected. Every day you become stronger in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.
Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Talk to me, sir. Yeah, Apostle. This brother, his name is Edward Salah. I need two, three persons to be talking quickly. In 2021. Since 2021. He has been partially deaf. Partially deaf. Yes. Said, on the right ear. He said, but during the praise and worship, he heard a sound poop in the right ear. And what happened? And then now he can hear. You can hear clearly. Tested Come on, brother. Come on, brother. You couldn't hear well with your right ear. No, sir. What, how, how was it before? Like uh, when someone is talking, I was bending like this. So when someone is talking, you have to turn. Yes. So because you couldn't hear. No. Now back me, close the left ear. Back me. Back me, turn and, fi and face that way. Give him the microphone. Say one. One. Ten. Ten. Thirty-five. Forty-one. Give the Lord a big hand! Drastic testimony here, sir. It's permanent in the name of Jesus. Amen. Talk to me, sir. This young lady, she said two weeks ago she went to the hospital and the doctor told her to say her pulse was very high, about 144. So after two weeks, she came here, she could hardly breathe. And when that pulse could affect her hearing and her sight. But immediately began to declare the prophetic healing words. Her healing came instantly. Her pulse was high. Was high. And it was affecting her breathing. Her breathing. Affecting her hearing. Her hearing. And affecting her sight. Yes, sir. What happened now? Now she cannot trace that pain. Everything is gone. Everything is gone. Sister, is that your testimony? Yes. Jump up to the altar here. Give the Lord a show. Yeah, Apostle, there's a miracle here. Everything the devil has taken from you, you collect it tonight in the name of Jesus. Come up, my sister. Come up quickly. Sasha, there's a miracle here, sir. Talk to me. She has been bleeding non-stop for six months. She has been bleeding non-stop. Permanent. In the name of Jesus. For six months, she has been bleeding non-stop. For six months? Yes, sir. She got healed this evening. What happened now? She's, she's has the bleeding stopped? It has stopped, sir. The bleeding has stopped? Sister, come up. Let's hear from you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Testimony, yes, sir. Just a moment, my brother. You have been bleeding for six months. Since 2017. Wait a minute. I didn't get that. You have been bleeding since when? 2017, maybe for two months or three months. Since 2017, you've been bleeding. What happened to you now? I've been healed. The bleeding has stopped. You are sure it has stopped? And somebody's just looking. Maybe you can stop bleeding. Maybe you can stop it. Somebody give Jesus the praise. Your healing is permanent. In the name of Jesus. I told you. Demons want to afflict men. They frustrate them. Imagine this young lady. Bleeding for since 2017. It would have affected her fertility. And so she wants to get married. She's afraid. She loses confidence. Blood all over. She's smelling. That's the case of the woman with the issue of blood. But if Jesus touched her that day, Jesus can touch today again. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, well, lady this, has been... this young man here came with chest pain and stomach pain since Wednesday. He could hardly walk. He could hardly do anything. You couldn't even walk because of the pain. Yes. What happened now? But now the pain... It has the checked back to her. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand. So Amen. this young lady, since she was four years old. Since she was four years old. She has been having issues with her right ear. She didn't hear. You don't hear with your right yes, ear. She's 17 Come on. years now. She's 17 yes, years now. She said when they are teaching in, in the class, she, ha she finds it very difficult to hear from that right ear. Since she was four. Four years old. Yes. She's 17 now. Yes. That's 13 years ago. ago yes. Come up, my dear. She's healed perfectly, sir. Perfectly healed. Perfectly healed. Give Jesus the shout. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Since you were four years old, you couldn't hear with your right ear. Yes, even though the teacher is teaching, but I was unable to hear with You couldn't hear with the right ear. Yes. Turn your back, close your left ear. Let's see that. 
Which one were you not hearing with? This one. The right one. Okay, back me. Close the one that was hearing. Say back. Say back. 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 No, I need to do some things here. You know, the reason we are, it's not a show. If God touched, God can perfect. So we have to be sure she has been helped. Now, Tom, say ten. Ten. Huh? Say five. Say five. Five. Say twenty. Twenty. Say forty. Forty. Give the Lord a show! Give the Lord a show! Give the Lord a show! Everyone carrying any symptom of sickness. In the name of Jesus, I command those chains to break now. Amen. I command those chains to break now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know why we take testimonies? Two reasons. Number one, to glorify the healer. And number two, to encourage your faith. So when we pray the first time, somebody did not receive. Now you are ready to receive. In the name of Jesus, Receive your healing now. I command pains, go. Deafness, go. Blind eyes, go. Tumors, go. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Sir, we have a testimony here. A young lady, a young lady has been sick. Has been a, she has been having a cardiac problem since she was young. Cardiac and problem, that's yes. heart condition. Yes, sir. Is it clinically diagnosed? A doctor told you you had a cardiac problem? Yes, sir. I've been having attacks since 20, 2015. You went to the hospital? Yes, sir. And you had the symptoms? Yes, sir. Come up, my dear. Listen to me. Hope you notice we didn't talk about the anointing. Because I don't want you to assume that he is anointed. Hope you notice. Is there any fire here? There's no fire. I'm a revivalist. If we want to do fire here, people will cry here. People will faint here. I'm telling you. <laughs> but hear this. I don't want you to live here and say, oh, he's anointed. This is not anointing. This is faith in Jesus the Savior and Jesus the Lord. Jesus the Savior saves you. Jesus the Lord deals with the devil that is afflicting you. As you walk out of this place, you will see the miracle casually. You will see power casually. In the name of Jesus. What was the problem? Uh, well, it was on the 25th of December. 25th of December? Yes, sir. So we were celebrating Christmas with our family. Then suddenly I fainted. So the time that I woke up, I was in the hospital. So they told me I had a heart condition. And since then, I haven't been myself. So, so what were the symptoms you were feeling? How do you know you are healed? So what usually happens is when I'm very much happy or very much sad or when I'm upset, I usually get some pains. So even the times that we are praising, I was very much happy. So I would feel the pains from, uh, from this side. So even when you are happy and you are dancing, you feel pains? Yes, sir. If you are running, you feel pains? Yes, sir. Anything that, anything that tells you, create pain. Yes, sir. Intense pains like that. So the times that you are making some relations, I felt something leave me. Something left. Yes, that's the demon. Yes, sir. It's a demonic condition. Yes, sir. And the demon left you. Yes, sir. You can't feel the pain anymore. Feel the pain. Run. Let's see. Do something that excites you. Yes. Let's see if the pain. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's somebody with a cardiac condition. Give the Lord a shout. It's permanent. Talk to me. So this young man has been having headache for three years consistently. Headache, you should lay hands on yourself now. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like a migraine and then he, with his stomach over bloating. Your stomach was swollen even when you came here? No, no, no. I, I, used, to, I used to feel headache like he, I used to feel dizzy because yes. I used to feel like things, they used to move in my head. Things were moving in your yeah, head? Yeah, yeah, like, like, like mucus. Yes. So for three years. You don't know what he's saying, no. You know what demons do? They use human beings to test new invention. Yes, sir. 
So people can tell you what they are going through, you'll be shocked. That's how wicked they are. So somebody is dying, they say they are doing experiment. Somebody is in pain, they are happy. Because they are wicked spirits. We will judge spirits this night. This night. You know, we will judge spirits this night. What happened to you now? Yes, I saw I was tormented for three years. Sir. Tormented, movements tormented, all over your head. Even though, even though I used to go to church and play, but these things, they used to torment me every day. What happened now? So now God has healed me. Not only that, sir, I, I also used to experience it, like the pain used to glow. And I used to see dark. I can't see. Proper. All of that is gone. Yes, yes, sir. Come up here, brother. Let's put some anointing on you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for power? Yes, sir. Touch in the name of Jesus. You will go and cast out devils by the power of the Holy Ghost. Sir, what this, happened to her? This young lady, since she was four, she's been having ear problem. Pass will literally come out from her ear. Pass comes out yes, of her ear. Yes, and she's saying the father has the same challenge. And when she came here, she could, she could hardly hear and the pain was intense. But when you began to declare healing, instantly the pain disappeared. Since she was four. Since she was four. How old are you now? You are 19. That means she's had this challenge for how long? 15 years. Pause coming out of the ears. Couldn't hear well with excruciating pain. Your father has the same challenge. Your father had the same challenge. That's not what you inherit. In this kingdom, you inherit power. You inherit glory. You inherit victory. So we cancel that forever in the name of Jesus. Come up here, my sister. It is permanent. So this sister has been having an issue with her eyes. She's so sensitive to light that when she sees light for a while, she begins to feel dizzy. But as she came in for the meeting, the course of the service, while looking at the light, she realized that she's perfectly healed. She's drunk in the Holy Ghost. Give the Lord a shout! He said, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Look at my sister. Shout glory! Glory! So, so she, we, she's healed completely. She had issues with her eyes. When she sees light for a while, because of her sensitivity, she begins to feel dizzy. And but that's gone been, now. It's gone. She's been Come on, my sister. Light. It's permanent. What happened to her? This young lady, she had a growth in her nose. You had a growth in your nose. Even when she was coming, she could literally feel it. What happened now? But when you began to pray, commanding growth to disappear, the growth momentously disappeared. Come up, my sister. Go it's down. permanent in the name of Jesus. Some of you will notice that you have been touched even while you are yet clapping. You will notice you have been touched while you are standing. You are not a spectator. You are participating in what's going on here. And my goal tonight is to make sure every one of you will live here with the audacity to cast out devils. With the audacity to heal the sick. Come up. You had a growth in your nose. Yes. And it is gone. Yes, it is gone. Thank you, Father. It's permanent. Can we take two more testimonies and then we, we so, go into prayers? This young lady was diagnosed with an over... Is that what? Ovarian cyst. Yes, that very well. Cyst. That means there is a growth. There was a growth. You could feel it? Um, yes, they could feel it. And the time I went recently, they said that I've got fibroids. You had fibroids as well? Yes. And you felt growth and pain? The pain was severe. Each time I would be in pain, I would, the only thing I could realize, I'm at Levy and I've been given an injection, which is diclofenac, and they could give me an overdose. That was they gave you overdose because of the pain? Yes. Do we have the choir here? 
Do you know you are supposed to be charging us up little by little? Can you give us a song? Come up, my sister. They diagnosed you with ovarian cyst. They now said fibroid. And you had excruciating pain. They had to give you overdose of diclofenac. What happened now? Give her the mic. When I was coming here, um, I called my mom. I was busy calling her, but she was not responding. I was in class by then. So when I went to my boarding house, I called her saying, I want transport money. I want to come here. She told me saying, ah, Sunga Sakilena, no, I don't have. Then I came, uh, she actually sent me the money. So I was like, I'm Zanya Mkakuma 17 and I overslept. Only for me to wake up at 18. She started calling me to find out if I had started off from my boarding house, which is in Sunga. Your mom was also expecting that you'll be healed. Yes. And you showed up. Yes. What I happened now? Up. I came with the pain, even though I was dancing, the pain was there, but now the pain is no more. Gone. Every pain is gone. Yes. Can you check your tummy? Yes. Can you get a lady to check it? Tap that tummy very hard. Let's see if she's still feeling any pain. It's gone forever. Take that power. Never again. So this young lady, a needle broke into her leg. A needle? Yes. Broke Why into she... her leg? Yes. An x-ray showed it, confirmed it, and when they did an operation, they didn't find a needle. So she has been having difficulty walking for a while. So she said in the course of the meeting, she noticed the leg, left leg started vibrating. The leg that stepped on the needle? Yes. What said, happened now? She is perfectly, she can't stand like this for five, ten You minutes. couldn't stand like that before, but yes. the pain and everything is gone. And you can walk now. Come up here and walk, let's see that. Demonic needle. This young man has been... Suffering from demonic walk there attacks. You couldn't walk like this before. What were the symptoms? They have been suffering from demonic permanence. In the name of Jesus. Talk to me. He has been suffering from demonic attacks. Pains all over the bodies. Is that the healing line? Yes, sir. all of them, yeah. They are healed? Yes, sir. What happened to my sister? This lady had pneumonia. She was diagnosed by the doctor and she was told she has got pneumonia. And every time she would walk, whatever she would do, she would have uh, sharp pains in her ribs. And even when she was coming here, she had that pain. And upon you declaring healing of her life, the pain has disappeared the just like that. The pain has disappeared. Glory to God. <laughs> Lift your hands toward heaven. I want us to pray a little before I bring the prayer. It's a, it's a field marshal in prayer. So I will stir you a little and then he will come up. We'll make some declarations and we'll keep praying as the Holy Ghost leads. Are you ready for that? Amen. Are you, are you hungry for something? Amen. Are you expecting something? Amen. Do you want a touch of the Spirit? Amen. We can't take the testimonies. I have to hear that. What happened to her? Sorry? What happened to her? Yes, let her sit down. It's the presence of God. Help her to sit down. Some of them are already getting drunk. Lift your hands toward heaven. Ask the Lord for a touch tonight. Ask the Lord for a touch. We are dealing with cases relating to people before we begin to address the territory. Ask the Lord for a touch tonight. Ask him to touch you. Ask him to anoint you. Ask him to empower you for your generation. Please, you have to be desperate. Our generation is in need of men. Our generation is in need of people. All the people who have been here tomorrow will give God thanks for them. We can't take all of that so that we spend time in prayer. Lift your hands toward heaven. Ask the Lord to touch you. Ask the Lord to touch you. Please speak to God now. Father, touch me. Father, Anoint me. Father, impact me. Act 
activate me for signs and wonders. As we worship the Lord in the next two minutes, I'm going to release the power of God here. tonight he will give some of you a name he will give some of you a voice and he will give some of you authority over the nations so that our generation will not be without a witness there are many young people here tonight God wants to empower and send some of you to your generation and so the anointing of God for special operations may come upon some of you right now if you are standing with anyone and the anointing comes upon that one please become an usher bring them up here now because there is a grace that is about to be distributed men that we address systems men that we address territories and men that we address their generation father wherever they are standing in this crowd identify them single them out baptize them with fire Take that unction now. 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 On the stage, on the ground, online. Take that unction. Help them now. Help them now. Help them. The fire of the Holy Ghost it descends upon you. Take that unction. Take that unction. Bring them up. Bring them up. Bring them up. Bring them up quickly. Take that fire. Take that grace.
Ghost. There is a fresh baptism over this place. Some of you, this is your night of encounter. The hand of God will come upon you and set you apart for your generation. Father, everyone you are ordaining tonight for mighty move of the Spirit from the nation of Zambia. I release that fire. Take that grace now. to take over nations. When he wanted to deliver Israel from Egypt, he raised Moses. When he wanted to deliver them from Babylon, he raised Daniel. Every time, when he wanted to deliver them from the hands of the Midianites, he raised Gideon. When God wants to deliver nations, he raises men. Tonight, there is a grace for raising men. There is an unction for raising men. You may not look like it, it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit. Father, I stretch hands over your people. Everyone, you are anointing to become a deliverer from the nation of Zambia. Let your hand touch them now. Let your hand rest upon them now. Let your hand rest upon them now. Let your hand rest upon them. Rest upon them. All over this place, a baptism of fire. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. He shall Take that grace forever. He shall meeting tonight and the Lord will give you instructions take a seven days fast, take a 21 days fast and then encounters will continue encounters will continue encounters will continue encounters with God because of what he will use you to do by this time next year some of you your names will be across the nations some of you your voices will be over the nations because a scepter has been handed over. You will rise up as a deliverer from the nation of Zambia by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. 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 In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Before we go into the prayer session, before we go into the prayer session, very quickly, some of you are here tonight. 
you have never listen God is doing a new thing over this nation but for you to be a part of it you must receive the life of God that's the recruitment exercise this is not about church this is about receiving the life of God and having a personal relationship so that you too will be numbered in what God wants to do you cannot come to a gathering like this and leave not having a personal encounter with Jesus. You have heard that Jesus is the Savior. You have heard that Jesus is the Lord. You have heard that is the answer of human crisis. It takes more than having a healing from a meeting. He has to become the Lord of your life. If you are here tonight and you have been in church or you have not been in church but you know Jesus is not in a vital relationship with you. This is your opportunity. You want to lift up your hand and say, Jesus, I want to receive you today publicly without shame. Publicly, I want to declare you as my personal Lord and Savior. Not the Jesus that church is preach. Jesus become my Lord and my personal Savior. You want to make that decision? Can I see your right hand up? And say, tonight, Jesus, I want a relationship. I want a relationship. I want to receive eternal life into my spirit. I want to be born again. Now, if you are in front here and you are not lifting your hand, can you please go back so that we have a little bit of space? Now, those of you who are lifting your hand, can I see that hand one more time? This is the time to make a public declaration and surrender to Jesus. From where you are standing with your hand lifted, don't drop it. Walk to the front here and make that public declaration. Publicly surrender to Jesus now. Don't walk out of this meeting until you know like you know your name that Jesus has become your personal Lord and Savior. Walk out quickly. Walk out quickly. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about it's all about you, Jesus. Keep coming, keep I'm coming. Sorry, Lord, Look at the multitude coming to Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't be ashamed. It's keep coming. All about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. Keep coming. It's all about Create space you. for them to come to the front. It's all about Publicly you. surrender to Jesus. Publicly. It's all about you. It's all about you. Keep coming, keep coming. Create space for them to come to the front. One more time. It's all about you. Those of them who are already recovered, can you help them so that we have some space in front?
coming, this is the best decision of your life. If this is all that was achieved tonight, it's been an excellent meeting. Look at the number of people surrendering to Jesus and they are still coming. Keep coming, we'll wait for the last person. Because if you were the only sinner on earth, Jesus would die for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, you came out because you believe in your heart. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God, like you have heard. You believe that He died to save you and that He rose from the dead to justify you. But you needed to take this step of faith. And so you are going to confess with your mouth now that Jesus is now the Lord of your life. And what that means is that from today, you belong to Jesus. He's the owner of your life. He can dictate for you. You no longer own yourself. Jesus is now your master. That's what that means. Are you ready to make that confession? Place your, place your left hand on your chest and lift your right hand toward heaven. As a sign of surrender. Say, dear heavenly father, I believe with my heart. That Jesus is your son. I believe in my heart. That he died for my sins. And that he was buried. And that on the third day he rose again from the dead. I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. From today, the influence of the devil is broken from my life. I belong completely to God. And so I live to do only the will of the Father. And so thank you, Father, for accepting me. I live for you from today. In Jesus' name, I have declared. Can we call Apostle now to come and make declarations over them as we launch into prayers? Don't rush back. Just lift your hands. Let God's servant make a declaration over you. And then we use that window to go into the time of prayer. Can we clap hands for God's servant? It's all about we are about you. we are about to enter the second phase of tonight's gathering, which is the intercession for the land and intercession for the nation. This is where priesthood is about to begin, and so we invite God's servant. Lift us hands, Father. We give you praise for the entrance of your word gives light. And gives understanding to the simple. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for drawing your people to yourself. And we make a decree that the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you never backslide and you never save the devil again in the name of Jesus. By the power of God's word, you are elevated for signs, wonders, and miracles in Jesus. Wherever you go, your name will be heard. For the old has gone and the new has come. Beginning. As Christ has come in, whatever is not of God is evicted in 